Welcome back everyone. This is actually the first video on complex numbers and in this video I will introduce the basic idea of complex numbers. Looking at this equation very well, I can see that the left hand side cannot be factorized. 5 times 5 is 25. I need two numbers whose product is 25 and whose sum is minus 6, that is negative 6. Under the set of real numbers, there are no two numbers whose product is 25 and whose sum is minus 6. But let us attempt to solve this equation using the formula method. x equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. B is minus 6, A is 5, C is 5 also. So, X is equal to minus B, which is minus 6, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is minus 6 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 5, times c, which is 5 also, all divided by 2a. a is 5, that's 2 times 5, which is 10, okay? So we have x is equal to minus minus is a plus, that's plus 6, plus or minus, minus 6 squared is 36. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 5 is 100. Minus 100 all divided by 10. Alright? So we have x equal to 6 plus or minus 36 minus 100 is minus 64. Minus 64 all over 10. The next thing is to determine the square root of negative 64. Of course, under the set of real numbers, there is no value for the square root of minus 64. Okay, but I can write the square root of minus 64 as a product of the square root of minus 1 and the square root of 64. Okay. The square root of 64 is 8. That is to say we have root of minus 64 is equal to the square root of minus 1 times 8. The problem now is what is the square root of minus 1? Root minus 1 does not have any value under the set of real numbers. So if we choose the letter i to stand for the square root of minus 1, We'll be having the square root of minus 64 is equal to i times 8, which is equal to what? 8i. We can write this as x is equal to 6 plus or minus 8i, all over 10. Going further, x is equal to 6 plus 8i over 10, or x is equal to 6 minus 8i over 10. So we can just say x is equal to, divide 6 by 10, that's 0 0.6, plus divide 8 by 10, that's 0 0.8. So we're having 0.8i, or the same thing here, but the plus would be a minus, 0 0.6 minus 0.8i. So in combination, we can say x is equal to 0 0.6 plus or minus 0.8i. This solution is a complex solution. It is a complex solution because the values of x here are complex values. They are complex numbers. So here I'm having 0 0.6 plus or minus 0.8i. Okay, the number has two parts. 0 0.6, 0 0.8i. 
This part is called the real part. And this other part is called the imaginary part. So a complex number is made up of a real number and an imaginary number. So whenever we attempt to take the square roots of a negative number, we are definitely going to arrive at a complex value. All right? So this is what complex numbers are. We've seen now that the square root of minus 1 is equal to i. That is, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So if I decide to square both sides, that means i squared will be equal to the square of the square root of negative 1 is negative 1 because the square will take away the square root, leaving us with the negative 1. So i squared is equal to minus 1. This must be noted. What will be the value of i cubed? i cubed is i squared times i. And i squared is minus 1. So that will be minus 1 times i, which is equal to minus i. What will be i to the fourth? That's i to the power of 4. i to the power of 4 can be written as i to the power of 2 times i to the power of 2, which is actually i to the power of 2 all squared. So i squared is negative 1. That's negative 1 all squared. For the square of minus 1, that will be 1. Now let's take higher powers. What will be i to the power of 15? I can write i to the power of 15 as i to the power of 14 times i to the power of 1. Good. i to the power of 14 can be further written as i squared all to the seventh. That's i squared raised to the power of 7 times the i that we have there. The reason is because it is easy for me to determine the value of i squared, which is minus 1. So from this, I have minus 1 to the power of 7 times i. Raising a negative number to a power that is odd, we retain the negative sign. So for the value of negative 1 to the power of 7, we'll be having minus 1 as well, times the i, which is equal to minus i. So i to the 15th, or i to the power of 15, is equal to minus i. What is i to the power of 11? i to the 11th is i to the 10th times i to the 1. Okay? So I can write i to the power of 10 as i squared to the power of 5, because 2 times 5 is 10, times i to the power of 1. i to the second, which is i squared, is minus 1. That's minus 1 to the power of 5 times i. Minus 1 to the power of 5 is still minus 1. So this will give us minus i. Lastly, what is i to the power of 42? i to the power of 42 is i to the power of 2 all to the power of 21. Because 2 times 21 is 42. i squared is minus 1. And this will give us minus 1. All right? This is how to determine powers of i. I hope you get it and I hope you enjoy the video. Keep watching. I'll see you in the next one.